I'm Johnny DeStanton. We have Reginald Perryman, Perryman. Shaka Williams, Williams. <laughs> we are Tassari, and this is a There's Something About Real Estate podcast where we talk all things real estate. All things real estate. We back in effect. It's crazy. I didn't even practice it today. Normally oh, I yeah. practice it. Because you're a natural. Right. What's going on in the real estate world? Um, Nothing Everything, much. Right? Right? Nothing is happening. And so, no, I'm just kidding. I think that um, it's going crazy right now. We, we're in March. It's going, it's, it's going yeah, crazy it's going right crazy. now. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm chilling out, but the world is going crazy. I'm over it. Out here hustling and bustling every day. Yep. Slanging these houses. Yeah, the market is crazy. To, what I like about the market right now is testing a lot of people. So we don't see all the... all the gurus that used to be out there. We don't see all the excess agents, everybody... Feeling like they was, they was top top agents when they not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't, it's not to make fun. Just that the, the previous mm-hmm. two to three years was so easy that you had to just be in it to mm-hmm. make some money. Now it's like okay, your skills are being tested mm-hmm. now. So right. we talked about that on the episode. Mm-hmm. So here we are. Yeah, but you know that's crazy because I agree. But I think that the those people are gonna be able to come back maybe another half a year and um, still make money because i think the market is so we did just go through a sort of you know quote unquote uh slower period yep right but i think that that's again ready to people are like like buyers are now ready to get back out there again, yeah you know what i mean and then a lot of people were holding off on selling their house because you know they think that the uh the season you right. know what I mean? Oh, they, oh, I'm going to wait until the spring, you know, to, to bring my uh, listing back out. So I think it's going to flood for a minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's supposed to. Yeah. yeah. And, but then towards, the, but then again, it's going to flatten out again. And, and then that's when I think you're going to end up back to where you're talking about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people quit. Um, ne- the next, the next show we do, I'm going to bring up the stats when we were at the conference. They were showing how many people was in real estate and got out of real estate at different points over the past several years. Mm -hmm. You'll be shocked, Mm. right? But it's just too many realtors right now. Right. And that's not to say that's a good or bad thing, but it's like some people, you still going to get 20% of the people making 80% of the the money. money. That Mm -hmm. rule just still apply. But when a market shifts like this, so many people get out of it or – they kind of put their license and hold, or mm-hmm. they not as active. Mm-hmm. But that creates more for the people that's really skilled mm-hmm. because they get a bigger market share that makes it even harder for the unexperienced, unskilled agents to come back into the market. True. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to, I told Shaka, she I'm about to go. I know, mm-hmm. so, I know everybody's also an attorney, but I'm going to be an attorney plus a broker. So then it's going to be like, ha! You going? To, you going to law school? Come, do that. Do that. Do that. Then you gonna be? You going to law school? So then I'm just gonna be a real estate attorney and an investor. You still answer? You going to law school? I'm thinking about it. We'll uh, see. Ask me if I finished it in five years, huh? You going to Devry? No, one <laughs> state. What's the Devry? I don't know. One of the it, it more than likely. So I had to go on and um because. I, I had to check um, the ranking for Wayne State and see if they still was, um, you know, pretty up there on the charts. Right. And they still doing pretty good. I think they said, um, what, Michigan State is, like, number one for Michigan. How, it's how like many, Michigan State, then Wayne State, then uh, Mercy. I don't know. Because how, how many times – I never asked any of my attorneys where did they go to mm-hmm. law school. No, I don't know. I never even asked that. I don't, maybe that's like a New York thing or right. a, a corporation mm-hmm. type thing or attorney mm-hmm. to attorney thing. Mm-hmm. But every attorney I hire, I hire them based on their experience. Okay, well, cool. So I'm gonna go get some experience practicing law. All right. Um. There all right. Go. Let's jump into the show, though. Um. So well, let's just let's lead with the question, and then we'll kind of go into like 
the topic or a focus. And so the question that I have is I was checking out. Um, so I'm trying to strategize right now. Um, we have a lot more cash flow properties than what we had previously. Um, I'm still interested in the flips. And then, you know, we have listings coming. Right. And so, you know, we're always challenged with um, like thought questions you know why do you feel like this or that or you know we have to be able to give like an educated guess right so um i was running comps for one of our properties and i came across um two properties 18652 hartwell and 19331 littlefield both in detroit they're um in the same area um they're definitely you know comps you know they're fairly comparable they're to comparable. each other okay mm -hmm. And um, I just was, you know, it, it just kind of caught me that they both were listed. Um, no, they both sold in December. One was listed, Hartwell was listed in September. The other property was listed in October. Okay. And one sold in four days, one sold in 17 days. But the one that sold, so I think the reason why I had the question, because the one that sold, that took 17 days to sell, right. it was 400 square feet bigger. It had a garage. And from what I know about the area, just growing up, the block is a little bit more desirable. The garage or garage? Garage. Oh. Gar garage. All right. Um, <clears throat> so for me personally, if I were shopping, I would prefer the block on Littlefield more than the block on Hart. That's just a personal preference right right so um i'm just like okay well what's the difference in the two properties like why did a house that seems to be i guess better in terms of square footage and garage like why did that one and they they were kind of they listed take longer yeah sell. why did it take longer why did it sell for less it seemed like they had a more so not difficulty because it sold in 17 days so right how much difficulty did they really have? But they did a price reduction, and they gave concessions. And some will argue the finance type is not the most desirable for right. sellers. So you want to know why the smaller house without a garage sold quicker than a house that was larger with a garage. And for more. And they were both, yeah, and it sold for more. And they were both similar property, same neighborhood. Yes, yeah, similar property, okay. same neighborhood. So hey, you got that. You listening. Yeah, so I let's look lie, at, I, um, I, hope, I hope the viewers are listening. So let's look at the two properties, right? Mm -hmm. So you want the long answer or short answer? I want to look at the, I want, okay. we have to look at, I want to just look at the picture. So we got all the data. Um, so right. let's, let's start with our, Hartwell. Let's, let's have our engineer pull up Hartwell, click on the photo there. All right. And then go right through the photos. Now Hartwell was listed at. The original list price was two thirty. A little slower, Miguel. A little slower. Two thirty five, right? Yes. And it sold four thousand above asking price, with no concessions, and it sold in four days. All right. And this is a nice looking property. Was this a flip? Probably was a flip. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I doubt somebody fixed it to this level and stayed there. It doesn't look like it was lived in. If so, it wasn't lived in that long. But this probably was a flip. All right. So so the answer is a long answer. There's no real short answer because it's so, to me, it's so many variables. It's a short answer depending on who you're talking to. I agree. I mean, it, I feel like it's two short answers. Mm -hmm. I agree. But I'm... So me and Janita kind of talked about this a little bit. All right. So that's how we got here. Out, you can close <laughs> out those photos there and then go up to where it says previous so we can see the other property. Now this property, Littlefield was originally listed at two fifty five, then they dropped it to two twenty five, which is a thirty thousand dollar price reduction, but then it sold for six thousand above asking and that one had concessions. Yes, eight eight thousand eight thousand in concessions, yeah. which brought it back down to two twenty three, technically. Technically, mm -hmm. right? All right. So let's click and look at the photos on this one. So this one was larger, five hundred square feet. So let me ask you this, right? Because people talk about square footage. Mm -hmm. 
unless it's an extra room, is 500 or less square footage even noticeable in a home without an extra room? I'm just saying, like, you in the house and mm -hmm. maybe you got an extra 50 square foot in one room, mm -hmm. an extra 20 square foot in another room. Mm -hmm. Is it even noticeable? I think that for me personally, it depends on where it is. So, like, the one right. that we're going to be listing technically is smaller than this. Right. Not in the kitchen space, but we have a larger family room, um, but they have larger bathrooms okay than what we have we're not listening oh you're talking i mean talking our property in terms of like you know desire when i walked in this property i was like dang why we ain't get this one right. <laughs> so, and not that it's a necessarily a better house it's very similar we have a bigger garage probably a nicer lot in a way um mm -hmm. but the square on square footage this one has better bathroom size so okay. That answer to me is yes. Five hundred square feet is a lot. Right. If Depending it really, on where it's at, though, right? I really don't. It don't matter where it's at. Five hundred square feet in a fifteen hundred square foot house or a two thousand square foot house. You're talking about a third more house. Right. Or a quarter, or a quarter to a third more house. That's a lot. Right. Whether it's in you got a your bedrooms are a third to a quarter bigger. Your yep. living room is a third to a quarter bigger. A quarter to a third better. Your dining room, your kitchen, all those rooms are just much larger. So right. sometimes you, you hear a lot of buyers come in, they say the room size is too small. Right. That don't fit my king size bed. Yeah. You so know what I mean? So, but <laughs> I've seen, I've so seen they will not buy a house for that bed. 1,500 and one is 1,900, but the bedrooms are identical in size. Mm. But the extra square footage is like an extra room, like a family room or something like that. That's even big, though. Right. Like, because some people come in and be like, if they don't have that basement or that additional family room, that's a thing for them. Exactly. So, yeah, okay. I think it is. All right, let's look through the rest of these photos here. I think we, did yeah, we he went through them already. Yeah, we yeah. got through all of so, them. Oh, he didn't. This, this, yeah, property took, this property took a different route to get to point A, pretty much. Mm -hmm. All right. So To you, get to point B? Point to get out from A to B. To C, which yeah. is close. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they started at A, they went to B, and they went to C. Yeah. Okay. And they could have started at B like the first one. Mm -hmm. So they when you say that, C. what does that mean? They could have started there? So Hartwell was listed at 235. It sold for 239. Littlefield started at 255 and ended up at 225, right? Mm -hmm. 223, yep. Yeah, 223, mm -hmm. basically, as their net. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Littlefield was just overpriced, even though the square footage, the square footage of 500 square feet extra doesn't justify almost like a $20,000 increase in price, not for this area. How much does it Cause justify for? What they got. <laughs> I mean, no, but it's probably... It's hard to say. It, if they, I think if they would have started, if they would have started at 230 or 235, they would have got it. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they started at two fifty five, once they did that price reduction, they told the market they was a little desperate, mm -hmm. and now that's why they end up getting a little bit more. But they had kickback concessions, so when they was at two twenty five, somebody came in and noticed that hey, this is probably underpriced at this point because mm -hmm. it will appraise. Mm -hmm. But then they rolled in their buyer concessions. So if they would have started at about two thirty five, they probably would have got it. So that is one major issue, right? Mm -hmm. Is that they were overpriced from the beginning. Yep. So this in this area, there are no two hundred and fifty thousand dollar comparables, period. So they was already trying to push the market, right? And they were trying to push the market at a bad time. We was this this went uh, the other one went um, so this was October. I, the end of October is when this listing um, went live. October twenty right. seventh. Yeah. So we going dead in the middle and dead into the, the slow season. Right. Right. And then you come out with an overpriced property. Right. Um, a lot of stuff was going on. Rates was changing. Mm -hmm. Market. It was just a lot going on. It wasn't crashing. It just wasn't moving like slower. it was. Yeah. And whoever, the, either the agent couldn't convince them of that. Mm -hmm. Like we said on the show before, the market will teach you better than I can. Mm -hmm. So it's just, that was just the end result. Mm. But it, but there's other ones. There's other things that I see. Janita got some point. You want to make your points nope. first? Okay. So some of the other things, if you, uh, Miguel, and I'm gonna have you go back and uh, over. Let's start with the larger one. You have this one right here. Look at this photos again. All right. 
So I always say that in flips, you got your good, better, and best rehabs. I mean, you got some bad ones too. Right. But you want to be in the good, better, or best if you're a flipper. I normally try to be in the best. I normally don't, I don't really go to the better because I, I don't see the money. So this to me is a good to better rehab. And you'll see. So you see right here, slow down right here, uh, Miguel. So the, these floors, they're all right looking. You know what I mean? Right. They don't look. Uh, now, Janita walked this house, so she said they look really good. She said they used a, a satin finish on the floors. But, th you know, these, these don't look like, um, you know, the floors that, that I would expect in a, in a uh, best re uh, remodel. Go ahead, Miguel. Keep going. Uh, so right here, I see, uh, see, I see all kind of stuff to me that maybe people can't see through the filter of the photos right. that without going in there that show me that this is a uh, good to uh, better uh, rehab. Keep going, Miguel. Yep, keep going. Keep going. Is that a wall unit? I didn't even know yeah, that. That's a wall AC unit? Yep. All right, so they don't have an AC. Keep going. They don't even put blinds on the, on the, on the windows. Keep going. So this kitchen is 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 a. Uh, what is, about that is, transition now? Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's terrible. That's a trip hazard, ain't it? No, it ain't a no, trip hazard. It's, hazard, it's but just it's terrible. It's, yeah. Bad transition. I can't even call it terrible because sometimes that's what you have to do, right? Uh, that you can tell that they opened up a wall there. Uh, most likely, it looked like right. they opened up a wall. The finish job. All right, keep going, Miguel. You know, this kitchen ain't bad, you know what I mean? Right. But we're, we're going to see the levels. So they do have uh, central air. They do? Yeah. And they got a wall. Yeah, so they that had that been... wall unit in that extra room. Oh, back okay, there. okay. All right, keep going. Because it probably wasn't a vent back there. Yeah. To heat it or cool it. Yep, keep going. Like, this is it's not a, uh, this is definitely, I would call this, it's not the best kitchen, but it's a better kitchen. It's a, that's, a, that's a good rehab. This right here looks pretty decent. But they got that cheap vanity right uh keep going i like it i like i like i like um it's still in in the better still in, in the best category for me keep going is there a tub and a shower that's a yeah. stand-up shower and a tub mm -hmm. in there. Yep. keep going keep going keep on all right. All right. Now, what so about the siding, the roof, and the windows? So that's not brand new siding. Uh, those windows don't look like they're brand new either. I don't see uh, those don't look like brand new windows, but they're newer. You know, they're vinyl. Right. And they look like they maybe painted some of that brick. Uh, all right, let's go to the other one, Miguel. So go to previous or next year. Now this right here, I call this is a, be a best rehab. I don't fall in this category most of the time because you don't see the return on your money to me, right? right. This is these these are the people that got the passion projects that you know what I mean yeah. they doing it like TV, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, they trying to do it to their liking yeah. and all of this. They're yeah. trying to go in and be creative with it. Yeah, which is nothing wrong with that. Just to me, you don't make as much money right. and you you going overboard. We'll see. Let's Unless go. Unless you're getting a discount on materials, because the labor gonna be almost the same. No, because well, I'm gonna show you why. Because well, this. I'm just saying for yeah. for example, you laying floor mm -hmm. floor tile down. It's the same, floor and you down. can get a better quality or or for style sure. of floor tile. Mm -hmm. Then you still paying the labor, so for sure it might make sense. In for some sure, cases. but you can see right here, I just just right here. Look, you could tell that they they did some uh, um, lawn maintenance. Yeah, they just did the the landscaping. Bit. Yeah, the landscaping. Yeah. Look, they got their address. Uh, Played on there, the nice one. Oh. Uh, keep going. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying. You, I'm just saying. He didn't point that out on the other house. What? Yeah, he's just saying this one more obvious. Yeah. And it's the little details. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Well, we about to too. see. But well, I'm just talking. But we about to see. So look, when you go, when you look at this living room compared to the other one, look at this. Look, they, they went, they tiled the entire fireplace all the way up. Wait, I, the other one wasn't staged, was it? No. We're gonna get there. There you go. We're gonna get there. <laughs> that's what I need us. That's what I need us. Okay. But and then, but y'all gotta do something else. But go ahead, Shaka. Uh, we're gonna get to the staging part too. So <laughs> in here, you seeing? Look at this. Look at this uh, finish, though. I'm looking at the finish of the work. Uh, 
Janita's argument is, is the staging, but we'll get there. Uh, I just ignored the finish job. Oh, <laughs> uh, you definitely did. Oh, this okay. is a this is a this is a best finish. Oh Lord. So this okay. finish is better than the the one that we just saw. Mm -hmm. Keep going, Miguel. Yeah. Nice. This is you know I would never do this in the house, it's, but it's really nice. Keep going. Oh yeah, they look. They want to show that off. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they got the uh, the better quality light fixtures. Keep going. You can see they put new uh, uh, baseboard and uh, shoe in here. Keep going. Look at this kitchen. Compare that other kitchen wasn't bad, was it? No, it wasn't. But bad. does it compare it's to this kitchen? Um, yeah. it's a it's matter of taste. Bigger. Man, this yeah. kitchen is. They went over the top on this kitchen. Look at their tile. They tiled. To the height of the cabinet, to the top of the cabinet. Oh, you talking about the amount of materials mm -hmm. they use? Yeah, because it's kind of overkill. I'm looking at the how much they spend. Look at all that cabinet space, right. all that countertop space. This I is, see what you're saying. Uh, look at their... Like most people would have stopped maybe like three-fourths of that countertop. Yeah, you would have stopped yeah. at the bottom of the 18 inches is how far you yep. go up on uh, on Backsplash. All right. Now they got the floating shelves. Look at them. They, like, they plant this out. Uh, they got the extra long uh, uh, cabinet pulls. Keep going, Miguel. Look, they even got the little bookshelf over there at the uh, <laughs> at the end. They they used every inch of the kitchen. Keep going, right. Miguel. Cause there's something else that's getting ready to say. Keep going. Look at that 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 uh, that wine area over there. I'm I'm gonna say somebody name that that would do this type of flip. Joe would do this flip. Mm -hmm. okay. The appraiser. This yeah. is the kind of flip that he would do. Uh, he always does really, really nice flips. Look at that. Look at his vanity. Look at the vanity here. It's not your your regular $150 vanity. The other one had the standard $150 gray vanity in there. 170 179 or whatever. Look, those stairs, that, is, that looks like a plank floor, but those pieces that you buy right there, those are expensive. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? I, I, we use the actual plank flooring to do that in the in the uh the silver st uh stair edging okay. you know what i mean we don't do this uh look at it though keep going so they have the same they have a similar thing we was talking about the shower and mm. the uh and the and the bathtub keep going yeah and and look at the tile so you see that other tile was that cheap i mean i don't call it cheap but it was that gray and white tile that we've been using for forever you know, they went in, they went with the little glossier tile. Keep going with the gold. Go ahead. You can keep going, Miguel. We see I think we see the I think yeah, you can Yeah, we see clear. some of the differences. Yeah. But to the average person though, they couldn't tell much some of them little nuances. So I think that the person I think when you walk in here, when you walk mm -hmm. in the house, you're gonna feel you're it. gonna feel it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? You're gonna right. be like, Wow, you're gonna you're gonna go into the first one and you're gonna say, This is nice. The right. first one, you're gonna say it's nice. But when you walk in here, you're gonna be like, even me. I, you know, this we do this all the time. We do we can do this type of work for somebody else that wanna pay for it. Right. But so it's it still looks good to me. Right. You get what I'm saying? And right. I you know, I know what what looks good and what doesn't. They both look good. This I'm just saying that Janita is a step above. Okay. All right. All right. But go ahead, Johnny. All right. <clears throat> so Janita did not ignore the finished job. There's no way in the world that I'm going to see the pictures and know the tile and see things that I, I like. Right. So I don't like luxury vinyl plank mixed with hardwood. Yeah, uh, the, nah. the staircase was really nice. Right. Um, they had a wine bar. So cool. Um, a lot of times when we talk about um, value, we talk about how much does the appraiser give you for that. So we know we're not getting nothing from the appraiser for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But there's this other part that talks about connecting to the person coming into the house. Mm -hmm. And so he's talking about it on one aspect, but I feel like completely ignoring it on the other part of it that really draws you in. And so um, how we got here, I was thinking about staging like rentals to try to uh, yield a better return, a more quality buyer, evoke that emotional response that you get when you put in nice furniture. So like, when we were going through the little field photos, my right. photographer would have had to come back and retake those photos because we're not getting photos with uh, shades yeah, drooping yep. down, being uneven. Right. That finished job on that uh, floor, I just would have cropped that out of my photo. 
It wouldn't right. have been. It maybe maybe we wouldn't have fixed it, but it would not have been in our in, uh, your marketing in my photo. Right. So when we get ready to list the house, and I just told my client this, I go to that house like when it gets closer and closer and closer. You see me more and more because I have two jobs. I have to understand that house as an agent, and then I also have to understand that house as a consumer. Right. So I'm going in there, and I'm just looking around, trying to see, okay, well, what's going to make this better? What's going to make that corner look nicer? And sometimes the only thing we can do to make that corner look nicer is to put a faux plan in it. Yeah. So when I was looking at this, and I'm like, okay, Littlefield has a garage. It has more square footage. Um, some will argue we would take some of that into consideration, price per square footage. We can't necessarily consider all of it because they'll tell you um, don't depend on price per square footage for your appraisals because the appraiser's not necessarily, like, but they do have to do adjustments, right? Yeah, there's adjustments, but how is it impacted? How is it Im impacting in the market? Because each area right. of price per square footage is going to be different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I tell you, when you pull up over here on Littlefield, you're coming up out of drive from Vassar, whether you go right or you go left, you're in that that feel of a space. So w when I'm looking at this house as a Detroiter, right. and I'm looking at the landscape, I'm looking at they did the nicer address on, they painted it blue. Right. And I'm like, why in the heck didn't a 1,900 square foot house sell at the, so maybe they did overprice it i think that if this were me i would have been probably talking to shaka about somewhere between 239 and 249 mm -hmm. and what i always say is well let's wait till our stage gets finished or we get finished with the project like whatever it is we're going whether it's just finished the project and it's cleaned right. or it's finished cleaned and staged i need to be able to go back over there at finish and then look at numbers to determine what I actually feel like the you know where it's gonna sell at. Right. So when I'm looking at this, we might be five thousand dollars off. And I'm like, I just don't think that um I think this house would have done better had they staged it. Down from putting if they was gonna use those paper buys, pinning them up right. Putting some photos in there, right. putting some furniture in there, putting some curtain panels up in there, some artwork, and I don't think that they would have sold it for two twenty three. I, I just they would have sold it for more. I just think they would have sold it for more, yep. um, based but on it. <clears throat> here's the thing: would you? How could you have to convince your seller to stage it? Because everybody don't want to spend the money. A lot of people don't want. So and then, give you a scenario in a minute. We talk about. Um, so before I go there. I want to, so I pull stats because we talked right. about the time. And let me let me ask you. Let me bring up something too. Are these first time home buyers buying these homes on average? On average, yeah. The so. average person mm -hmm. buying a two hundred and twenty thirty thousand dollar home in Detroit is a first time home buyer. I would say. I so. think so. You think so? I, I think so. I think. Okay. Um, it's probably like fifty fifty because you got the first time home buyers that's kind of like from the area and they they're okay with right. being there. And then you got people who have purchased before and they're moving I'm back. I'm talking into about the... income wise, median income for a I Detroit like can afford a two hundred and forty thousand dollar home. You don't think so? You think they're in the hundreds? I think it's still in the hundreds. I think it's about one seventy five for the like for the upgrade. median household income for Detroit. I think most of your first time home buyers are buying under two hundred. Hmm. So you that's well, just they my, the problem that's is my... they're not able. So you have to be able to convince that first time home buyer that if they can't afford it and they are going to move forward, then they're probably not going to get something as turnkey as either of these two houses. Right. Because probably... I'm talking about property taxes and everything. You yeah. feel like this is an upgrade. Like I think this, this I think this is somebody's second home. Someone okay. that probably brought like their first starter home, probably seventy or eighty. Mm -hmm. It appreciated in value. Now it's worth about one thirty. And they're selling and they got some equity. Um they got they're a little <laughs> bit more established. Now they're buying this home. Mm. But I right. want to talk about But I'm not ahead, saying it's that. all first time That's home buyers. Yeah. Um all the buyers are move up buyers, but mm -hmm. I think it's it's not all first time home buyers buying yeah. this price point mm -hmm. in the city. Yeah, the, the people. I think that the people that's returning to the city are mm -hmm. also spending more money on houses. Exactly. So the reason I brought that up because I noticed some things about Littlefield when we talked about that exterior brick. Mm -hmm. If I was flipping that house, even though it looks nice, mm -hmm. I would never have painted that brick mm -hmm. because the average homeowner that's owned the property before that intends on staying there, they're not going to want to deal with that pillar. That paint, paint five or six years from now they're not gonna want to maintain it 
but a first time home buyer probably wouldn't know any better. Care, yeah. mm-hmm. They're just like, cause that color pops, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But see, that's the difference between your marketing and knowing who you're marketing to. So that's why I brought that up. I think your age might be showing a little bit there. It, <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you I why. I mean, because I've owned homes. So no, I don't I'm just deal saying, with that. So like, you I don't. I like natural brick typically, and I right. don't want to deal with that chip and paint. But right. I can tell you, so like my fireplace at home, which mm-hmm. is a massive piece of my room, right? I took a minute before I decided to paint it, and then but I that's, ended up. That's a fireplace. We talking about a whole house. house. But the what? The paint. Yeah. But how me? much would you Fenway. charge to oh, paint the house? Dogs. Uh, yes. Yeah, but what question. I'm saying is, the people you got to think of. So these people, some of these people are coming from Birmingham. They're coming yeah, from they're Royal to Oak, it. right? So that that's what I'm saying. It's kind of a um. I think but pe- people who grew up in a city, like for the longest, you know, we said, t- oh, you don't paint that brick, and then yeah. if you you don't paint that brick. But I think that mindset is changing because you're seeing a lot of people paint that brick. But that's not what we're talking about. We talking All about right. staging. I just asked. But I wanted to talk. No, about- that was a very valid point that he just brought. No, up. it was valid. I'm, so I'm not be- saying it's not because, valid. But because it's gonna time to what you getting ready to say. But go ahead. So it's two things before I get back into the staging. Um, Shaka brought up the time, so I went and I did. Um, so. We had 49,000 listings from September to December in 21. And the average days on the market at that time for September was 27 days. And for October was 30 days. In 2021? In 2021. That's 2021. Let's do 2022. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And 41,000 listings. And in September, it was 31 average days on the market. And in October, it was 35. Right. So in 21, you had, you know, so they're averaging around 30 days on the market for but September. The, listing, the amount of and listings October. decreased by a lot. <clears throat> right. Mm-hmm. And that's it, the reason why. But go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. But, the, but we were talking about time on the market. No, right. we're talking about okay. both. No, we, because we were talking about the time. And you said that when he listed the house, mm-hmm. the it was longer on the market because of when they listed it. I, I gave several reasons. But that was one was of them. When we were talking yeah, about days yeah. on the market, you but, were talking about yeah, that's one of on the average because he said that one house was listed in September. So, of course, it did better because it not. Oh, okay. So that. So you want me to say what I said? What did you say? Okay. So what I said is, all well, right. I know people can rewind this, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So what our, so don't she's, lie. But she's not talking about it on here. She's no, talking right. about yesterday when we started talking about this. Right. Um. So, uh, what I first, so the the debate here, what well, we should have just came out and we, I guess she didn't want to lead the witness, but we should have really just came on here and just been real, right, and just said, hey, do you think that the reason that this house sold for more in less time was because it was staged? That's the question. And that's what we should have said. And so I said, no, I do not think that that's the reason why. There are too many variables to say that that's the reason why. Right. I understand that this one happened to be staged and it sold faster. Right. And technically for more and it's less square footage with less amenities, meaning it did, you know, because it doesn't have the the one car garage. Uh, However, there are other factors. One, the main factor being, the, to me, the quality of the rehab. That's the main factor. Mm-hmm. There are other uh, factors as well. Time, the timing, the, the listing date is uh, a potential factor as well. And again, we don't know any of the facts behind these listings. We don't right. have any of the information. We don't know how many offers they had. We don't know what happened with inspections. Right. We don't know. It's too much information I'm to not know. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, you know what I mean? So, so but, 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 but my point was, though, that so her the whole debate here is that she believes that uh, staging produces more money. And uh, look, she put me on staging. We, she, the first time I staged a house was through Johnita. So I, and I, and that's been years ago. So I do understand how staging can help. Right. But I feel I have a different perspective on staging than she has. I feel like staging is for those for a house that you have a problem with that's got that that it maybe was not rehab nice or has some awkwardness to it. Right. Yeah, you might need to stage. If you got a house that the layout is is awkward, like yes. you said, or it's not a simple cookie cutter, you may need to stage it to give people a vision of what could go there and how to mm-hmm. place their furniture. Right. Yeah. But 
two years ago, I don't think staging would have made a big difference because you was getting highest and best anyway, right. regardless. Okay. So but in this case, I think it helped. <clears throat> Okay, mm -hmm. so what I'm saying is, so we talk, so to do process of elimination, it's like let's go look at the data mm -hmm. and see how the average days on a market change from September to October, because that was one of the things. Right. And when I looked at the data over the three years, it just didn't change much for average days on market for September and October. But did right. it change? It changed by three days each so, time. So it yeah, changed. It's not that. Hold yes. on. But it changed. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, but so, yeah, it's not significant. Three yeah. days is not enough so so here's here's my thing right so i want to talk talk to our viewers in regards to how so a lot of people when they're when they're looking for a home or even some agents that work with plenty of buyers don't understand the negotiation to get the seller to list at the right price so the average seller mindset is this Seller calls you and say, hey, I want to sell my house. So just think about it like this. Seller has two nickels. They call you and say, hey, I have these two nickels. I want to sell it for 12 cents. Right. You like, no, it's worth 10 cents. Mm -hmm. Right. And they like, but it's two nickels. Mm -hmm. So then they'll say something like my neighbor sold their coins down the street for 12 cents. My neighbor sold their house down the street. I seen it on Zillow. But, yeah, they sold their coins also, but they had a dime and two pennies. Mm. That's why they got 12 cents. Mm -hmm. So a couple of days later, you're talking to them, and they say, well, I found somebody that sold their two nickels for 12 cents. You say, yeah, they were two nickels, but those were collectibles, mm -hmm. right, over a century old or whatever the case may be. So they worth a little bit more. They're not the same nickels. Mm -hmm. So... Next day, you talk to them, they're like, yeah, my other neighbor sold their coins for 12 cents. Yeah, because they had 12 pennies. And then they'll say, well, my nickels are bigger than pennies. Mm -hmm. It's still worth 10 <laughs> cents, mm -hmm. right? So that's like the, the, the game we play back and forth with sellers because sometimes they think it's worth more than what the market is willing to bear. And even though we'll give them a range, sometimes you just don't know until you get out on the market. Mm -hmm. But... When we talk to sellers, when you talk to a seller about staging, it's like, what's my return on investment? We can't always justify it because in some markets, you don't know if staging is actually going to bring you more money. And I always say that. Right. <laughs> but, but I want to say you something can. else to your two nickels. Well, <laughs> so sometimes, though, you had your neighbor uh, had those two nickels. Right. And they found somebody that actually bought the two nickels for 12 cents. Right? Yeah. But that's one time. That doesn't exactly. mean that everybody behind you going to come back and give you 12 cents for your 10 cents. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, go ahead. I mean. So let's see what the National Association of Realtors had to say about it. 58% <laughs> of buyer's agents cited that home staging had an effect on most buyers' view of the home most of the time, while 31% said that home staging has an effect but not always. 81% of buyer's agents said staging a home made it easier for the buyer to visualize the property as a future home. Yeah. I mean, um, staging. Yeah. Uh, then they talked about photos, but they talked about um, like the, like how much. So you got seller's agent perspective, but then they talked about like how much um, more of a return you should expect. So what I wanted to do was figure out how much more of a return did house A get than house B. It was sixteen thousand okay. dollars, right? So, so here's the thing: what's the average cost of stage at about two grand? About thirty five hundred. About thirty five hundred, right? So can you justify staging in a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar home? What's no. the return on investment well, for well, thirty okay. five hundred? It depends because the the return is supposed to be one to five percent. Is what they said, right? Right. I think that's what I read. So, and and then, again, I, these aren't even real stats. They didn't really go. They, that's why you. They just you, they just asked questions and it was yeah, a survey, right? this is not a real, so, uh, this is fake. So, my thing is, because sometimes I have sellers ask me, should I stage my home? Not meaning, sometimes you don't need somebody to bring in furniture. Sometimes you need people to stage what you already mm -hmm. have and they charge less, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
I always tell them it's it'll help sell the property, but it's not going to guarantee you a, a good return, return on your investment. It's just going to make it look yeah, yeah, it's going to make it look yeah. better for marketing. For sure. Yeah, so like over here they got um in 2022 that it was 1 to 5 percent and then over here they're saying the return on investment is 5 to 15 percent and then we got to factor what what cities and what part of the country was that happening in? they did they did um kind of talk about that a little bit but right. i'm seeing it here personally right um and i am seeing the properties do better Yep. Um, when they are staged and those, you know, some of them, and I will admit, you know, sometimes I'm looking at properties, um, on the market and they will be staged to the gods. Right. And I would be like, why is that property still on the market for 300 days? Right. But I see that, um, a little, so if I had to speak personally about my listings, the stage ones do really good and they typically sell for more. Right. I would not agree. I mean, would not disagree with that. Uh, but I would say this, uh, some of those listings, like I, I had a flip in Southfield. I don't know if you saw it, but it had to be staged. This, this, the floors on there, we had uh, concrete floors and there was LVP over the top of it. It was kind of wavy. You know right. what I mean? It had, it had awkwardness to the house. Right. Had, it, had that not been the case, I would not have needed to stage that house. But this house, particular house, needed to be staged. So, but, but, even more than that, the, the only point that I was making is I hear her. Uh, for rentals, I don't see a point. I don't see a point at all to stage a rental, right? Uh, like, unless, so, okay. No, I don't see any point to stage a rental. I can't even give you, unless you just, I mean, we are trying to get more than market rent in this uh, particular right. area. And a certain type of tenant. Uh, yeah, but I think the house is going to do this. So this house is not an awkward. It does not have any awkwardness. There's right. no, oh, what am I going to do here? What am I going to put there? Every Everywhere is functional. You know what I mean? It flows the way it needs to flow. Right. I don't, we don't, if we were selling this house, I wouldn't stage it. You know what I mean? I would, now she might, sometimes I need it. Well, she may say she wants to stage it. Okay. But this is not one that I would feel like we needed to stage. Right. Uh, and then the big key here, though, is all this is not real data. This is somebody else's opinion. And I looked at I, several different sites. I mean, well, this right here, all the information that you gave us yeah. is somebody's I opinion. I the most reliable sites. And those people's opinion. So I, if I had to choose out of my opinion here right. in Michigan, dealing with the houses that I'm dealing with, right. and somebody who's talking about, who's generalizing what they're talking about, I'm going to go with my opinion all day, every day. So uh, I don't really care. Like this right here did not sway me in any way, shape, or form. I still feel the same way. Staging does help. Uh, it, it does help. But like Reggie said, it, it could help the house sell faster, but you're not getting the return on your investment. You're definitely not getting no five. You can't tell me anywhere where we got 5 to 15% return on, off of staging. That means that we would have gotten – there. There, no way mm. are we getting five so what i'm going to do is for me um i'm gonna continue to look at the the research that i have at my fingertips right. and in the areas that i serve and i'm going to pay attention to stuff like this and when i get ready to list the house i'm gonna be like hmm i'm gonna try to get that other sixteen thousand. and actually for the more square footage right it could have been another 20 to twenty five thousand. so here's here's my I'm gonna problem try to get that money. here's my problem with that <laughs> that is Okay, once you sell a house that's not... Well, once you sell a house that's staged, right? It's staged and it's sold for whatever price. You really don't have a realistic comparison to say it would have sold for less if it wasn't staged because we don't you know don't. that, right? Now, and, and you rarely have two identical houses, completely identical, one stage and one is not to say what the real impact was. But it's really based on opinion. I think staging helps from a marketing aspect. I don't always encourage sellers to do it, um, especially if their budget is tight. I want them to spend their money on the actual property, mm -hmm. right? And then staging is something like just put the coat, you know, the cherry on top, and it's just going to help with the market appeal. You use yeah, I'm more so. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm more so. That this is more like probably a conversation for investors. If I walked into someone's house and they were trying to move, I talk to those people about staging their own items. 
So I've been, so those conversations go, you know, we're going to clean better than normal. Right. We're going to put things inside the cupboards that are normally on top of right. the cupboard, on, on top of the cabinets and on top of the is refrigerators. That staging or is it getting it market well, ready? Well, you're getting, so it's market ready. So you're going to clean, you're yeah. going to organize, you're going to declutter. But should we be cleaning anyway? Bruh. But you're going <laughs> to clean more. So anytime somebody comes to my house, I'm right. going to do a deeper clean than I'm doing when nobody's coming to my house. So if I'm going to have an appraiser come, if right. I'm going to put my house on a market, I'm going to do do a lot more than what I typically would do. Right. And so the conversations with people who may be putting their money toward the house, I walk into people's houses often and they have like really nice things, but then they got a bunch of clutter on top of the really nice things. So I, talk, I say stage with your own items, stage with your comforters, mm -hmm. get pull out your matching sheet sets, right. uh, straighten the pretty picture up. Like you're right. gonna you're gonna stage with your own personal items if you have clean them. up that one junk room where you yeah. got all this stuff. If it's um a relative's house, you know get all that stuff out of there. We Ebony um had a listing a few right. months ago where it was like um a old family member's house. Mm -hmm. Well, it was like a friend, but and she was having a trouble kind of like talking to that agent friend about getting the re old the relatives that had passed away yeah. getting their stuff out the house. But it was a real thing. Like, that may be hindering your sale. If that awkward table and old plant wasn't sitting there looking crazy, right. somebody might come in here and buy the house. Some people, Who knows? Some people just lazy, though. Like, sometimes you just, or they just don't really, they just not there mentally. Like, I have clients that's going through stuff in their house. Like, I don't even put the other photos online because it's just like, this is not going to show well. I'll send the photos to the agent when they request them, but... Some people are just like either not mentally there or they don't have the ability mm -hmm. or they don't have the finances. And you just got to list it. They want to get it sold. But for those that can, make your house look as nice as you can. If you got the money to stage it, I recommend it. Just be, just keep in mind, you're not, it's not going to guarantee if you spend 2000 you're going to get 4000 or 8000 back. Right. I can't or guarantee even 2, that. Yeah, I can't guarantee that in any market. Now, on my flips, if I have it in my budget, I will consider light staging, mm -hmm. Be, especially if the house got like a, a wacky like floor plan mm -hmm. or something like that. Make right. all the sense in the world. Yeah. So the question though, we, I, we we got away from the question. Right. So the question though is, huh? Go ahead. Do, do, do we <laughs> do we think that the staging is what um, prompted this house to sell the the house with less? square footage and less amenities to sell for more and quicker and the, my answer so i'm gonna get everybody answer i'm gonna give you mine and the, and i say staging could have helped i can't de definitively say that staging helped i would say if i had to point at one thing that caused that it was the they overpriced the property at the beginning if i pointed at the one thing that i feel like and then if i went to the second it would be the quality of the rehab and if I went to third, I, I would probably get to the staging. I'm just going to say the one and only thing was that it was overpriced to start with. The average consumer, some of them can feel it, but just looking at those those photos, the average consumer probably wouldn't have known as, noticed the quality. Mm -hmm. It would just been a preference over which one they like more. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think the staging in this case really helped. Um, that much, but I mean, it helped the house sell, but I don't think, um, yeah, I think the other one was just overpriced to begin with. And they lost out on a lot of buyers that was in the market at that period of time while they were overpriced that had 235 240 to pay for a home, but those buyers went elsewhere because this one was 255 yeah, so um, I'm a big proponent of the first seven days. First seven days, pull out all the stops, pictures, floor plan, smell good, staging, and right. you. They probably could have got two fifty five had they listed it at two forty nine. That's my opinion, and that's where I'm at, and that's how two forty nine was happy. So we know this area. <laughs> I don't care. Even look, I'm I'm, I'm happy. Right. Look, I'm happy for these numbers. The higher, like I ain't gonna lie, we bought this house. We bought this house almost a year ago. I feel like it was a long time. It was a, a little while ago. And right. I sh I, when we bought it, I was hoping for two hundred. Right. You know what I mean. So we had two forty now. Right. I'm happy as hell. You know what I mean. But uh, so yeah, I, I'm um, 
and, and we're close. We're we're uh, we're in the middle of them square footage. Yeah, that house on Littlefield is literally right across the street. Yeah, right across. Oh, and we got two car, uh, a two yeah. car detached garage and a better yard. Yeah, we we in we in a much better space than 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 these properties. So oh, I'm, you want to know something funny? Mm -hmm. I brought a house on Hartwell back in 2010 mm. for sixteen thousand mm. dollars. I sold it on land contract for forty five. <laughs> And got eighteen eight eight thousand down, and like two years later, she had to deed it back to me because mm. she had to move out of state, mm -hmm. and she didn't have time to sell it. And I ended up selling that house again for sixty thousand cash. You like, and I, <laughs> and I, I was like, I like, killed it. <laughs> now I'm looking at this like, man, I ain't kill it. So, which is the reason why I'm not flipping no more. I, so I'm not saying that I won't flip anymore, but right. the flip thing is done for me. Like, yeah. I mean, for the most part, it's got to be an area that I just don't want to be in, an undesirable area for me to flip. Because I could have just had the four I had in that area mm -hmm. at the time. I could have been selling them four right now and been a million. You wouldn't even have to sell them. You could have just been collecting <laughs> the money. You know what I mean? Like, or, or uh, yeah. No, I'm tired of tennis. But, yeah, so um, that is a wrap. All right.